Welcome in, Tuesday edition, Oxford Exxon Podcast, Chase Park, Neil McCready, Clark Ford Studio here with you this morning. We will talk uh, more college basketball, Ole Miss basketball search, Chris Beards, kind of feels like recruiting a little bit right now. We'll get into that. Uh, Ole Miss baseball tonight, Southern Miss, 6.30 from Swayze Field, the Golden Eagles and Rebels meeting for the first time since the Super Regional in Hattiesburg last uh, last June, so really not a lot to talk about, but we will at least mention that throughout the uh, show today, and then some NFL stuff. The New Orleans Saints have their uh, have their quarterback Derek Carr headed Fired to up. the oh I'm, got your guy Derek Carr I, I, baby I, I've been getting a lot of spin the last twelve hours or so got some buddies going hey look and giving me all the details so we'll get into that some combine stuff I'm going down there this weekend I can get you a jersey you want what, you want the black one you want the white I know one? the white one always white you want the white yeah always Carr white. number four jersey always I mean got him for at least two years no matter what yeah, I mean he's so, your guy it's a it's a friendly deal for the Saints we'll get into that. See in the thread this morning, Anthony Richardson being compared to Cam Newton, blowing up the combine. So plenty of stuff to talk about here this morning on the show. A, bro- a show brought to you every single day by the Oxford Exxon Highway 6 West in Oxford. Remember to uh, take advantage of the Rebel Ready Twitter campaign. You get on social media, you tweet about Ole Miss baseball, you hashtag Rebel Ready, you at the Oxford Exxon, you have a chance to win, or f- win four box tickets for the uh, – series finale every single week so it's Ole Miss and Purdue this week 1 30 on Sunday for the next chance to do that it's with uh with the Oxford Exxon again rebel ready on social media have a chance to win there Ole Miss and Purdue this weekend lunch specials hot case ribs so many different options for you there with the Oxford Exxon and MPW Digital so take advantage of those things and we're coming to you from Clark Ford Studio we are Clark Fords in Amory, Mississippi, 662-257-1900 is the number. You can call it. Ask for our buddy Corey Clark. Tell Corey what Ford product you're looking for. He'll send you a quote within 15 minutes and business hours. Y'all are used to that part. Here's where Corey and the people at Clark Ford are different. I had an issue yesterday with uh, my truck. Happens. Stuff happens. The truck's a 17. Um, literally just kind of shut down electrically. You said this when we were on the phone yesterday. and On University Avenue. It stopped. Just stopped. And um, we'll talk about it here in a minute. Yeah, I'm curious. Yeah. Go ahead. But I called. And yeah, Corey and our friends, but he does this for other people too. Uh, he does this for customers. And they helped me figure out what to do. Uh, we're going to get, they're going to get my truck today, get it to Amory, get it looked at, figure out what happened. It's back running now, but I don't really trust. Nah, nah you know, come up probably not the smartest thing. So, I mean, he's hooking me up with the vehicle to get to Nashville and get back. It's the kind of service that you don't get everywhere. You do get it at Clark Ford because they want to be your truck guy and they want to be your car guy and they mean it. They'll prove it to you when you make the call. 662-257-1900. Guest will join on the MyPerfectFranchise.net hotline. And I'm pulling up my ad copy right now. If you are a... um, you know, a displaced corporate executive wanting to put your career in your own hands, you're an experienced entrepreneur looking to diversify, Andy Ludeke can help you. He owns multiple franchises and businesses, uses his expertise to help others find their American dream through a very thorough and free consultation process. Just call Andy, put your life and your career in your own hands. It's 100% free. Got nothing to lose. MyPerfectFranchise.net. Contact Andy at Andy at MyPerfectFranchise.net or 404-973-9901. So had you previously had issues prior to our phone call? Because no. to, to, to set this up, you confused me, but I was like, okay, that sounded serious. We'll just kind of talk about it later. We were discussing work stuff, and you said, hey, I need to go. My truck is shutting down yep. was the phrase that you used it did. there. It started just flashing these electrical warning systems, and it was just shutting it down. And I, I was on university, and I was trying to get into that parking lot with OBs and Okay. Snap. And so you're all at least that. in the right lane. I'm in the left lane. Yeah. Okay. To get over, but then it died and it would not. Just in the middle of the road. At the stoplight. I'd got to the stoplight. It died. <clears throat> uh, let's see. I was, I can't repeat all of the things that I was called. Um, oh, by other people? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, you're getting. Because apparently, apparently in someone's <laughs> world, you know, I just decided that this would be a really good spot and time to just stop and sit for a while. And put my cautions on. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you got nowhere to be. Hey, hey you know what? I, I mean, let's just stop and hang out. I mean, I got lots of middle fingers. Did you really? Yeah, yeah. People, let no one tell you that people are just everyone's kind. That's total bullshit. 
When people tell you, oh, you know, most people are really nice. Nah, that's not true. A lot of people are really nice. A lot of people are really kind. But a lot of people don't have common sense. Like the, I would have deducted, I think, hey, the person in that truck is having automobile issues. The car, the, the truck's not moving. The, 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 the caution lights are on. I would have deduced that something's wrong. This was around 1.30? 5.30. Oh, this is our last call. Okay. Yes. I was checking to see what time we had talked. Okay. 5.30. It was 5.30. Yes. Oh, good time to be around auction. Nobody's out or anything at 5.30. You're good. I mean, the roads are empty. Uh, you're, yeah. You're, you're, you're fine. Yeah, it was all. So, so how thought, long were you there? About 15 minutes. And I was able to, because I talked to the people at Clark Ford, and they're like, it might take 10, 10 minutes to reset. That's about right. Oh, so you just sat there for 10 minutes? I couldn't. Are go. you still trying? I was trying, Every but they told me to kind of stop. Well, then it's give it roulette a little. a little bit. And so finally I got it started, got it into that parking lot. The people at Shivers had come to tow me, thank God. Oh, okay. Um, but I got there. So you went tow truck fast just in case. Well, yeah. Yeah. And so I got there, and then I talked to Corey, and we kind of came up with a plan. And the uh, nice gentleman from Shivers was kind enough to follow me here in case that happened again, like on 7. And so if you're ever in need of towing, I highly recommend Shivers Towing. They are really <laughs> nice people. Um, there's their free ad. They were fantastic to me. They could not have been more professional. Great guy. Um, appreciate them immensely. And just to the people that called me some of the names that you called me. You were impressed a little bit. I mean, a little impressed. There was a moment there that I thought my feelings were about to get hurt. Um, deductive reasoning. You should try it. If you think about it, the odds are overwhelming in that moment that the person whose truck is not moving with the caution lights going, it's either because something has medically happened and maybe you should come ask if they need help or, and this is more likely, it's more likely that there's a mechanical issue on the vehicle and it has been rendered immobilized. It's just a big two-ton paperweight right now is what... And uh, that, that the odds are overwhelming that the person that is operating or attempting to operate the vehicle is not deciding that this would be a fun time to hold up traffic on University Avenue in rush hour. So just yeah, thinking out loud. Yeah, the two thoughts that I have is now, yeah, again, you don't really trust the vehicle until it's looked at. So you're basically the motorist version of Hunter Elliott and his elbow right now. Um, yeah. From, hey, it might be all right, but it might not. Got a little tickle in the mind. Yeah. And then I, I do get that is you you hear some words at you and you go, I really should be pissed, but I go, wow, I, I'm, I'm just a little in disbelief right now. Like, there's yeah. a certain. Like the guy that goes by me and calls me an effing body orifice. I was like, wow, that's a lot of, <laughs> I mean, that is a lot of vitriol to carry around every day. It's like when you get the really good insult at you at a baseball game if you're playing and the kind of player looks at it and goes you know what that was good yeah all right, all right. yeah Dylan Delucia talked about that when he was in Hattiesburg last year he was warming up before the game before game one and I forget the exact quote but uh a Southern Miss fan that was sitting out there in the roost or whatever they call the right field thing told him he would be a great uh model for the before version of Weight Watchers <laughs> and he <laughs> said he turned around and just went Okay, that's that was, good. That was good. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm kind of impressed right now. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you you stayed very calm. I mean, almost to an eerie level. I was a little like, hold on, what? Yeah, what just happened right there? I don't I, know. I, I don't know what it is with me, man. Like something's happened in the last few months where I've just kind of flipped a switch. Like I just. My give a damn buttons are really broken. Like they just, I, I, I mean, I do my work and I care about stuff, but like at the same time, he's like, whatever. Like yesterday, you and I spent all day trying to kind of verify a rumor. And there was a previous time in my life where I would have just been all consumed. And I was like, eh, it is what it is. I don't know. I don't, don't think it's true. Can't prove that it's not. Okay. I tried. Talked to a lot of people. Nobody knew. The rumor, of course, is Chris Beard, the former Texas coach, being on campus yesterday. On campus in Oxford. Whatever. Yeah. Anywhere north of wherever Tim Floyd lives in Mississippi. 
I can't, I can't prove that it's not true. I certainly can't prove that it is true. I got a call yesterday morning. I was on my way to the gym. We'd finished the podcast. I was on my way to the gym to get my run in. And I got a call from someone in coaching who said, Hey, the rumor is meaning the rumor in coaching circles is that beard is either going to be in Oxford on Monday or Tuesday. So today, and I was like, well, Tuesday would make sense because the team's leaving today to go to Nashville. Um, Six o'clock tomorrow, South Carolina. Yeah, they play a game tomorrow night, so they leave today. They'll practice there and blah, blah, blah. But I was like, you know, if you're going to bring him into the building, you probably want to bring him into the building when they're, the coaching staff and such is not in there. Multiple reasons. Number one, you don't want to just shove it in people's faces. And number two, I mean, the more people who see it, the more people who potentially can talk. Although I'm not sure why. Look, if you're bringing Chris Beard to town, right? If you're bringing him to town, you obviously have gotten super serious and things are moving in in one direction. Doesn't mean that it's inevitable because this is different because he's not employed. Had someone ask me, well, is, how's this different than Mike Bianco interviewing for the LSU he job? He doesn't have a job. Well, Mike Bianco was and is the Ole Miss baseball coach at the time. Chris Beard's unemployed. Now, he's not going to be unemployed for long, but he's unemployed. So it's conceivable that he could come to town and decide not to do it, or he could come to town and you have to sit down with everybody involved and somebody walks away from it going, you know what, we just can't do this. I I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm speculating at this point. But I can't sit here and tell you, and maybe you can, Chase, I can't sit here and tell you that he was or was not in Oxford. No, I mean, I – what I said yesterday, I've only heard more and more and more strongly, which is that Ole Miss continues to go down the road of pursuing Chris Beard to some extent. It's clearly not been ruled out, and I have people that, when they get adamant, I trust, who said they would put their money on Chris Beard being the next Ole Miss basketball coach, barring another school taking him, essentially. That's what I got. Yep. So, make of that what you will. Um. I don't know where things are falling in with Texas Tech right now. I don't know where things are falling in with any other school. But Ole Miss, as of last night, still was not doing anything but continuing down the road of I'll say a that, courtship with Chris Beard. So I talked to a couple of people at Texas again yesterday because I'm just desperately trying to find something, right? And two things. One, the market for Beard might not be as robust as people think. I asked, what about Texas Tech? And I know there's, I have a friend in the coaching business who said, hey, Texas Tech and Beard could get reunited quickly. And I asked about that. And they're like, ah, oh, I tell you, I don't know that I see that. I was like, really, why? And they're like, yeah, it, was, it wasn't the best breakup in the world. And they've kind of moved on and they might be looking to go in a different direction. And then I, asked, I said, well, what about Kansas State? And they're like, what do you mean? I said, well, Jerome Tang, is he coming there? And they're like, oh, uh, Texas is. Texas is going to big game hunt first, like big, big game. I, I was asked not to repeat names, so I won't. But they're going after big names in coaching circles. John but, Calipari? No, wasn't Calipari. Uh, was one existing SEC head coach and then another uh, big name coach. Okay. I'll stop there. That's fine. Um, you know, whether they can get those people, I don't know. And it could lead to a ripple effect but i will say this if i'm Ole miss if i'm if i'm hiring chris beard i'm i'm wanting to get it done quickly i don't want i don't want i want to do it right now while there is a limited market for him because if something were to happen that i heard that would create another open that would be yeah stuff could stuff could change rapidly We don't know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Timeline, what would you anticipate? If it's Ole Miss. If it was Ole Miss. Sorry. I, hypothetically, if Chris Beard is Ole Miss's next basketball coach, when do you think would be a deadline to where if it had not happened, you go, yeah, I don't know. Uh, nine days from now. When the tournament starts that Thursday. I think if you haven't done it by that Thursday, you've, you probably have hit some sort of a roadblock. Yeah, that does make the most sense. I mean, if you're doing it, look, they play tomorrow night. They do. Let's say for kicks and giggles that they win. 
both you and Tyler are predicting a Ole Miss slash South Carolina upset of Tennessee. Oh, on, Tyler did too. On so jumping on yeah. jumping on the boat, <sighs> which will be fine. If it happens, it happens. Um, you don't want to hang around Saturday. I don't think I'd be there till Saturday, but I, I <laughs> it, it complicates my Friday a little bit, honestly. Dennis Felton says, "What up?" I mean, I saw it happen. I'm before. just saying. I saw it happen before. Um, again, that was the craziest thing I've ever covered. It was nuts. Um, not the it's the craziest game stuff I've ever covered. They had that team had no business winning those games. That team beat it beat Ole Miss on Thursday night. Lucky as hell. Ole they Miss, even get through Ole Miss. Ole Miss was better than them. Yeah, they hit the little thing at the buzzer. Yeah. Ole Miss was better than them. They beat Ole Miss. They beat a Mississippi State team that was worlds better than them. They beat a Kentucky team that was better than them. And they beat an Arkansas team that was better than them. They, they, they got lucky in that as tired as they were, Arkansas had played a 40-minute epic up and down before. with Tennessee where everyone was just emotionally spent. And physically spent. But they beat four teams in four days that were better than them. So, I mean, it happens, but it's rare. Anyway, to answer your question, I, I would think you could leak it as early as this weekend. I would think if you're doing it Tuesday, Wednesday, next week, the basketball transfer portal opens on Monday. So a bunch of cats will get in the portal. That on, feels relevant. A bunch of cats are going to get in the portal on Monday. Now, a bunch of cats are going to be playing in tur tournaments. You get 68 teams that are going to the NCAA tournament. Another, what, 32 that go to the NIT. Some are going to go to that CBI thing or whatever it's called. But then as teams get eliminated in the first week, you're going to have a bunch. Somebody of, will go to that? Somebody will. I mean, they'll, they'll play it. Just for kicks as we move forward, because this doesn't matter at all. But it's a question I had yesterday, so maybe somebody else out there had the same question. Georgia on that weird run in 2008, they beat Ole Miss 97-95 in overtime on the first night. Yep. They beat Kentucky 60-56 in overtime. Mm-hmm. 64-60 over Mississippi State, and then as you alluded to in your writing, 66-57 over Arkansas in the final. That was devastating for me. I couldn't – I'm still not quite over it. And then they went to the Verizon Center in Washington, D.C. and got popped by Xavier in the first round. Oh. That's how it ended. A team that played Ole Miss in the regular season finale, the two days, three days, four days before the SEC tournament and lost by 15 at Stegman. Yeah, it made no sense. It, it, it just like it completely it was, made no sense. It was nonsensical. They won one of their last one, two, three, four, five, seven, seven games in the regular season. Made no sense. Two of their last 13 didn't win the tournament. Hey, if you have a pulse, I mean, you have a pulse. Well, I mean, look, that's what that is what you tell guys. You just, if you have, you have a pulse. I mean, if I'm win case, what I'm telling my guys today is, hey, fellas, none of it matters. Just go play. No tight. This just, weird stuff's happened before. Just go play. Just let it all hang out. If you get beat, you got beat. Everybody expected us to get beat. We got beat a lot. Win and then take your shot. If you win, you take a shot at Tennessee the next afternoon. I do have a weird question I'm going to ask you after the break. But before we get there, all the co mid-major coaches are either haven't started their tournament yet or still alive, right? Nobody's been upset from the list that we would potentially put together of possibilities. I think that's correct. Mills, May, McCaslin, Odom. Yep. All of those guys are still alive, to my knowledge. I didn't check Utah State. I guess I could pull it up real quick. Did you see the turnaround, by the way, for Kennesaw State? They make the tournament. They win whatever conference that is. I don't know. You can tell me. I'm not sure. Um, but this is kind of crazy. Two years ago, yeah, three Utah, years ago. Utah State plays okay. tomorrow night against – a team to be determined. So Kennesaw State, the rebuild job, to again, they made the NCAA tournament. They win. One in 28 to 13 and 18 to 26 and 8 tournament champs. Damn. They were one in 28. 
How about that? A couple seasons ago. And now they're in the tournament. Now they're in the tournament. The player who hit the game-winning free throw with .7 seconds left in the title game, Terrell Burton, came out of high school with zero Division One offers and was on that one in 2018. He finished with 19 and was named tournament MVP. So everybody, you need a Cinderella? I mean, Terrell. You, you, you my, found your Cinderella, guys. See, this is why people like me love the tournaments. The storylines. Like you go sit down with Terrell and just be like, so, uh, so uh, what was one in 28 like? If I told you two years ago that you'd be here, what would you have said? Last year, the Kennesaw State student newspaper did not cover the team at all. That's wild. One in 28, two years ago. So see, when wherever they go, that's your day one story. Yeah, Kennesaw you, State. Kennesaw State, because they're not going to keep going. So you get that. The tournament for people, at, this, honestly, this is the truth. I like to make fun of the national guys who just lap up the tournament. It, it's it, because they, do, they have a void of reality. Yes. And you're just it, it's so sucrose for a week yes. that you're like, God. Bleh. Right. But I get why people The milkshake's good. I don't need a milkshake every 12 minutes. Right, right, right. But that's a legit milkshake. Oh. Like, that's fantastic. I mean, you go find Terrell, and you're like, hey, can we talk? And he's like, yeah, because he doesn't. I mean, a year ago, the student newspaper didn't want to talk to him. <laughs> the A-Sun, by the way. And now he's in the tournament. I mean, one in 28, you could have never imagined that you would be. They're saying that th this coach, by probably a year from now, will be one of the mid-majors that we're all talking about in another year, Amir Abdur Rahim. Okay. He, uh, again, he's at Kennesaw State. He was born in Atlanta, played for southeastern Louisiana, and then his coaching road, Murray State, 2006-2011, as an assistant, College of Charleston, assistant 12-14, to Texas A&M, assistant 2014-2018, Georgia assistant 2018, 2019, and then head coach at Kennesaw State, starting with that one in 28 season. How about that? One in 28, five in 19, 13 and 18, 26 and 8. How about that? That's, there that's, they are. that's wild. Good for them. That's cool. So, again, if you need a story, there's, there it is Kennesaw uh, State, I, the I, Owls. I mean, the, the tournament's just, if you get sent to the tournament as just, hey, go find copy, it's great. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fantastic. It's just stories everywhere. Podcast brought to you in part by Prime Shrimp. PrimeShrimp.com. Have it deli delivered directly to your door every single day. They can uh, hook you up. They can take care of dinner tonight. Code RG. Five pouches or more, and you get 25% off there, again, with code RG. It's a new code the last few weeks, so take advantage of that offer. Again, 10 minutes, freezer to plate, and they take care of you. Any of their seven different offerings right there to be uh, thawed, cooked, and ready to go. The New Orleans-style barbecue, the signature, those are two uh, very versatile options that are fantastic. They have the full meals in a bag. They've got the Simply Shrimp that can be seasoned yourself. It's great for kids, maybe a little more of a discerning palate, or the two-pound bags of individually frozen shrimp. Like was like, a lot like was at the grocery store, except for a higher-quality shrimp from the New Orleans-based company. So code RGPrimeShrimp.com. Walk on Sports Bistro puts everything they've got into bringing you game day with the taste of Louisiana. Dig into their mouth-watering. Made from scratch, Louisiana cuisine, po' boys, gumbo, voodoo shrimp, plus fan favorites like juicy burgers, fresh salads, 70-plus TVs, 40-plus ice-cold beers on tap. You can also order online at walkons.com on their convenient Walk-Ons app. Great place to watch all the conference tournaments, the NCAA tournament, college baseball, and more Walk-Ons in Oxford and Ridgeland. Speaking of Ridgeland, uh, the College Corner is your one-stop rebel shop. Two locations in the Jackson area in Ridgeland. It's next to Fleet Feet and Flowood. It's next to Half Shell. You can also go to collegecornerstore.com. Plus, you can find them on Facebook and Instagram with the largest selection of Rebel gear in central Mississippi. Brought to you by our friends at Comer Heating and Air, Southern Air Conditioning and Heating. It's uh, starting to warm up. You want to make sure that AC is ready to go. They, uh, call Comer, call Southern, different names, same great product, same great services, same people. If you live in Oxford, Batesville, Tupelo, or that area, call the people at Comer, 662-801-1777. If you live in Hernando, Memphis, or the surrounding area, call Southern, 662-429-4429. A-Stock Auctions is a Nashville-based online auction company with the mission to provide customers the power to name their price. All items at A-Stock start at just $1. That's right. Every item starts at just $1. Shop now at astock.bid. Download their app, name your price on thousands of items from big-name retailers. A-Stock Auctions has multiple locations around Nashville that offer local pickups, so don't miss out. If you want it, bid it, win it. And we're brought to you by our friends at Solutions Rx. 
It's a probiotic, multivitamin, and supplement company created by Ole Miss Pharmacy alum Chris Cornelison. Everything is manufactured right here inside Mississippi. They've got tons of uh, products that can really help you with your health, with your compliance. They've got prescription support that we tell you about all the time. Also, all sorts of multivitamins, supplements, things of that nature to keep you healthy, keep you compliant with your meds. Uh, SolutionsRx.com, promo code OEP at checkout and you get 10% off of your first order. Podcast is brought to you by the Ole Miss Athletics Foundation with baseball back in action. Show your support for their efforts on the field this season by signing up for the Pledge Per Win, Pledge Per Home Run campaigns. Donations are charged every Monday. They're allocated in your blue priority point total and are up to 90% tax deductible. So sign up today by visiting to give to athletics.com slash donate or call the Ole Miss Athletics Foundation at 662-915-7159. Remember Morgan Wallen concert tickets Available, that is in April, the same weekend as Ole Miss and LSU Baseball. That's Saturday night. That's Sunday night. Vault Hemingway Stadium. Tickets on sale. MorganWallen.com. Great prices on both nights. So, again, get your tickets. MorganWallen.com. So, with Chris Beard. Yep. I mean, this has been going on for a little bit. Um, Again, we feel certain that that, I called it a courtship, but whatever you want to call it, it's ongoing. Potentially meeting with him, however that, whatever that looks like, wherever that looks like, um, clearly has not pulled the plug on it. You talk to a ton of people. I know in the last few days they have talked to people around the University of Texas, um, mm-hmm. gotten a lot of feel for that, for what happened, also what was sort of the PR response on all levels from Texas. Um, frankly, there's some people with Texas pretty high up that believe that. Um, he should have been retained, or at least they should have waited until more information was out there. Yes, um, there is there is a strong opinion in that regard. So it's a lot there. I guess my point is, if this is playing out as we believe it is, for what we do have, which is limited, but we have a little bit. Um, where do you think it is in the process? I mean, you're not really still accumulating data on that night or anything along those lines. That's already been done now. So just it's your guess. I mean, in theory, where do you think this would even be sitting? What are you trying to accomplish at this part of the proceedings? So my guess would be based on what we're hearing and just common sense really is that they they being Ole Miss, whoever that is, that's Keith and Alan Green and Glenn Boys. Glenn Boyce and the search firm that they have on retainer or whatever, that they've done a pretty deep dig, basically a cavity search at this point. You vet it. And at some point in the vetting process, you get to a conclusion. And the conclusion is we can do this or we can't do this. I would guess with him, given the fact that There is going to be baggage that comes with it. There is going to be negativity from some fronts that will come with it. I would guess with him that you would like, before you pulled the trigger and sat on a podium or dice or whatever you call it and took questions from media, I would guess you'd want everyone in the room that's going to be there to sit down and let's make sure that everyone's exactly on the same page. We have a plan for how we're going to approach I would, I'm, I'm guessing here. Yeah, sure. A plan for how we're going to approach media, how we're going to approach um, PR, how we're going to approach boosters, how we're going to address concerns, because there will be some. There will be some people who will not like it, who will be turned off by it. Um, and then I'm just kind of making sure that this is going to work. We're all feel good about it because if you do look from a basketball standpoint, this is a home run. I mean, I've talked to so many people in basketball over the last two months about Chris Beard because once it became obvious that Ole Miss was going to have to make a move and that was pretty quick. And once Chris Beard was out there and you started hearing, well, this, this charges are going to get dropped. I remember writing that in January that the word out of Austin was that charges were getting dropped soon. And you thought, well, this is, I, I remember writing in 10 thoughts. He's hireable. Technically from a basketball standpoint, he's an absolute home run. I mean, he's the deal and he's 50. You're getting a top 10 coach 
according to basketball people. So people can pick that apart if you want. Fine. It's cool. In his prime, um, at the age of 50. That's pretty good. So I guess that where you are at this point is if at some point you get to that place where it's, you know, pee or get off the pot. Sure. Feels like they're probably getting close to that. If you're going to do it, do it. Yeah, because at some point it becomes, hey, yes or no. Because if you're not going to do it. At some point, that's where you go. Well, I said this last week. If you're not hiring Chris Beard, you probably need to start letting your fans know that you're not hiring Chris Beard. Because at some point you're doing a disservice to the next guy. Because a lot of people are out there that, that are that are hardcore just fans, just want to win. Mm-hmm. And they're like, we can get Chris Beard? And we're not getting Chris Beard? Well, the next guy's going to suck, no matter what. Even though the next guy might very well not suck. So if you're not hiring Chris Beard, you probably need to start backing off that pretty quick. Because I think you're getting into the danger zone where the next guy really won't get much of a chance. Not there yet, but I, I don't think you're far from it. Well, no, not if the date that, like you said, makes the most sense is the next seven to nine days, depending on whether we're talking about the first four or the first day of the actual tournament. Because either one has some relevance. Sure. Yeah. You don't know. I don't know. But you, do you think if it's not Beard, they know who the number two is that is the coach? You think we're down to two? <sighs> No, and, and the reason I don't is because there's, again, it's rumors. So I'm sure. stressing rumors. So sure. if someone at Ole Miss gets mad that I'm reporting something, I'm not reporting anything. It's rumor. But the rumor is, in coaching circles, is that Dusty May is about to agree to a long-term extension with FAU that gives him a pretty lucrative raise and that he's happy there for now. And I mean, people go, well, that doesn't mean he won't leave. Of course not, but. You you probably aren't signing a new extension, knowing on, you're out on March the eighth, for example, to leave on March the fifteenth. I mean that's kind of nonsensical. It doesn't mean it can't happen, but it's unlikely at that point. And then if it's not, listen, if it's not Chris Beard or Dusty May, your guess is as good as mine. I mean, we're now throwing names against the wall. At that point, you are going, hey, because like I said, I know that I know some other people who have been vetted. But that doesn't equal that's the choice. There, there, there's there's that misconception out there a little bit. If somebody hears that somebody's vetting goes, oh, well, he's a finalist. No, they just they vet a lot of people. Well, that's what those search firms do. I mean, I mean they they literally that, that's their job. Yeah. They don't come back and go, hey, Keith, here's the dude. No, well, I mean, here's no. here's ten guys. Here's five guys. Here's, here's what we found about these ten guys. Right. It's like the whole Bucky McMillan thing. I, I mean, I think somebody kind of looked into Bucky McMillan oh, sure. because there's a sense that the Sanford coach is a, a rising star in the field. I don't know that you can hire him at this point. And this, this is my thing. Like, let's, let's say Sanford has lost, by the way, that's yeah, the one school out. that is lost. Let, but let's say you're hiring. And, and for the record, I don't think Ole Miss is okay. Are we talking about Bucky McMillan? Okay. But let's say for kicks and giggles that you're hiring Bucky McMillan. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. You're doing him a remarkable disservice by letting the Chris Beard thing get life. Because you don't need him in a head-to-head versus Chris Beard with your fans, right? You don't need you don't need your fan base spending four, five, six days thinking we're getting Chris Beard to only get a guy who three years ago was at Mountain Brook High School. You, you that doesn't work. So if you're Ole Miss right now, and this is why I think this is why I think it's really real. Anyone with a logical brain, if this were completely out, okay, if you just know, hey, we can't do it. Whether it's because there's not the you know the money, whether it's a, a someone in the administration says nope, absolutely not. Like someone at Georgia Tech in the administration said absolutely not, so it never got life. Okay, in a world where that's the case, anyone with a logical working brain would leak out to media, hey, we're not doing this. Y'all can kill it. Go kill it. Well, look, any municipality that was getting the best Italian restaurant like in, in town and coming in, they don't, they don't need the entire town to go, hey, a Peter Luger is going in there on Tuesday. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, hey. Yeah. And then you come back and go, hey, the spaghetti's awesome. They go, hold on a minute. 
Right. I thought we were getting the porterhouse. Like, right, you right, know, right. I mean, come on. It's 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 expectations. It's and again, it's nothing against the Italian restaurant or Dusty no. May or Bucky McMillan or whomever. But the the coach de jour right now is Chris Beard. So you need to manage that expectation based off whatever that looks like. I mean, you're getting set up for a blind date. Yeah. And everybody tells you she is a smoke show. Well, you have an image in your mind. And then when she shows up and she's just kind of the girl next door, you're disappointed. Right? Sure. As opposed to if people just said, hey, she's really cool. She's, she's attractive. She's not off the charts, but neither are you, champ. You know what I mean? <laughs> Give her a chance. And she shows up, and she's kind of pretty, and you're like, oh, cool. I mean, you, it, it's a totally different deal, d- 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 dynamic there. And Ole Miss, if Ole Miss is smart, this is why I think it's real. I, I can't believe that if you and I can come up with these examples that Keith Carter and Alan Green and Glenn Boyce can't also. Come on. That they can't go, hey, we if this isn't real, we probably need to quit giving oxygen to it. Oh, and they might argue that we're not giving oxygen to it, but you – they're probably not oblivious to these conversations. That's a good point. Where would you put a money line on Chris Beard today? I don't hate like minus 140. Oh, I'd go stronger than that. Would you really? Yeah, minus 175. Kind of feels Yeah, I'm not doing minus 400 now. No, 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 no. I mean, that's a 19 point favorite. I might even do minus 200 though. Because some of the problem is I don't know who else is on the board. I mean, I got May at like plus five fifty, and then it's like yeah. But I mean, if like if if people and and you're hearing this from enough people, and we've heard it now for a week or two, that Dusty May and FAU are pretty far down the road on something. He's twenty eight and three going into the tournament. There, I've never been to Boca, Ole Miss, Middle, and uh, UAB. It's just funny. That's all. It I'm is. not. I'm. It's nothing against Dusty May. I just keep laughing at that. But if I'm Dusty May and I have any doubt in my mind that I can assemble the kind of staff that you have to have to win at a place like Ole Miss, and I'm 28-3 and and they're about to give me – I'm going to the tournament. They're about to give me an extension, a pretty healthy raise, and I I can hang in Boca for another year? I'm guessing if you have a lot of money that Boca is probably a nice place to live. Appears to be. And you can wait. There will be other, you, other schools will come after Dusty May. He's only forty six or so. Is he? Yeah, he's got time. I'm not saying, but I mean, look, Dusty May might very well desperately want the Ole Miss job to the point that he's on his hands and knees begging for it. I have no idea. I'm just being logical here. But again, if you're hiring Dusty May, if you let's say you're Keith and them, and you believe you're hiring Dusty May, you need to kill this beard thing. Because you need to, you need the you want the people that are you need that to extinguish. Yeah, because you're going to be trying to sell tickets here soon. You're going to be trying to get people excited about him soon. So you'd like to kill that where people are like, okay, well, I'm going to watch this guy at FAU, and maybe you watch him in the CUSA tournament, and you start to go, ah, he's pretty good. I like his team. I like their style. And then they make the tournament and they play against Illinois or somebody, and you know what I'm saying. You don't want everybody going. No, he's not Chris Beard. He didn't take the Texas Tech to the championship game. <laughs> he lost to Andy Kermit and Middle Tennessee. <laughs> he sucks. Completely unfair. <laughs> completely unfair. I, I, of course it, it's unfair. It's, it's absurd, but that's what people are going to say. It is what people are going to think. I mean, you, you're creating an expectation. It's, it's that time. So I'm, I'm guessing that they're hiring Chris Beard at this point. Because logically, that's what it feels like. Because look, Keith Carter could call Richard Cross and you and and just be like, hey, y'all need to stop talking about this beard thing. That's all I'd have to say. Where you could say, so that's not happening. And he would say, it's not happening. Stop talking about it. Because we stopped talking about Will Wade. Oh, well, sure. I mean, Eats hasn't done anything, though, have they? Not yet, but, I mean, supposedly their administration has given approval to just do it. Whatever. You're McNeese. Yeah. Sure. 
Let's ride. Okay. Jeff Goodman with nothing new at all on it. I was just kind of seeing if he had said a word. He hasn't. So I don't know. I mean, that's the thing. Even with national people, and I get they're busy and doing tournament stuff, but no new name has appeared. It's not like Goodman or somebody is. I mean, you're not seeing Norlander go, oh, let me tell you about. I no. Mean, no. Well, it's, again, I mean, if, if I told you, hey, it's not Chris Beard and it's not Dusty May, you'd be like, well, I mean, I can start guessing again. Yeah. You'd start guessing about Grant McCaslin, but I can logically tell you that doesn't make a lot of sense. You can, I mean, can you? I mean, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I know a couple coaches that the search firm spit out, so I can go, okay, well, I guess. Yeah. But it's also possible Keith looked at that piece of paper and watered it up and threw it in the trash can and went, okay, well, that sucks. So now what? Yeah. I mean, as of Saturday, Ryan Odom had not heard from Ole Miss. Doesn't mean that he hasn't heard from them today on Tuesday, but as of Saturday, he had not heard from Ole Miss. Or maybe it was Sunday, actually. As of Sunday, midday, he had not heard from Ole Miss. And he had heard from Georgia Tech and Georgetown. Oh. Tech's been very methodical about this. Slow. Yeah. Well, I mean, slow. you know, the, the people that you're trying to hire are still coaching. I mean, if Dusty May's leaving, he's not leaving FAU before the tournament's over. I mean, how ridiculous would that be? That's the other thing. People are like, well, what's, what's taking so long? Well, they haven't started the tournament yet. They likely, CUSA tournament basically has three contenders, North Texas, UAB, and FAU. Realistically. Is that, is that, I, I mean, I think. It would take a really big upset to not be one of those three. Louisiana Tech's okay. They, they've played close games against those people. They, they, if you told me there was an upset team, that would be the one. I mean, FAU is clearly the favorite. Yeah. They're good. Yeah, they're, they're really good. North Texas is, is really good because they play a completely different style. And uh, UAB has been playing has really j- well of jelly. late. And they have Walker, yeah. Who could go off and win a game. Yeah. But, you know, UAB is middle of the season went through a malaise that killed them from a net standpoint. So they, they'd have to win it. Mm-hmm. So with North Texas. Yeah. yeah. FAU is the only at-large possibility out of that conference. Yeah. I think FAU's in. Yeah, their, their metrics are good. Yeah. I mean, I, I think they're in. I mean, I'd rather them get in than the 11th place team out of another conference, frankly. Sure. Yeah. Whatever. So we talk, I mean, like if you're Mississippi State, if you're Auburn. You you're, need FAU you to are, win a tournament. You're, you're an FAU fan this weekend. Yeah. Podcast brought to you in part by G&M Pharmacy, 662-236-2222. They deliver locally in the Oxford area, and they offer MedSync. For your prescriptions the same day each month and take care of you. One trip to the pharmacy, one delivery, and you have everything you need when you need it with G&M. They will also transfer your medications. One phone call, they take care of the rest. So whether it's Holly Springs with Tyson Drugs on the Square or G&M on South Lamar and Oxford, that's 662-236-2222. Our friends at Dead Soxy have a free gift for you. The gift is exclusive. Head over to deadsoxy.com backslash rebels and join the NIL subscription. By signing up, you'll be the first to hear about exclusive collaborations, new products, and even receive freebies on the regular. That means you'll not only have the freshest socks in town, but you'll also be contributing directly to Ole Miss Athletics, helping support your favorite players. As your first gift for signing up, you'll receive a free pair of limited edition Juice Kiffin socks, which are only available to members. Sorry. To get your gift, all you have to do is add a pair of socks from Dead Soxy's Ole Miss NIL subscription. I always do wonder what would happen with Juice if he'd gone to Auburn. Does Juice go to Auburn? Yes. Juice goes to Auburn like people at Dead Mike Roberts is killing me right now. He's just yelling at me. Finish the ad. But like, does the eagle get distracted by a Labrador retriever on the field? That does seem problematic, doesn't it? <laughs> is an eagle and a lab running around together? Because, like, if you see an eagle flying around and your dog's there, you're like, I need to get my dog inside. Uh, right? Well, I don't think the eagle's going to get the dog. He's trained better than that. Right? Well, yeah, but, I mean, he's an animal. He's still is he going to snap. I mean, the dog's not going to hurt the eagle. No, but the eagle could hurt the dog. Yeah, he could grab him. He's big enough to. Yeah, if he just decided, you know what? I'm hungry. I mean, owls grab animals all the time. That's what I'm saying. So you can't just assume that because the eagle's trained that the eagle's not going to go. Got a lot of thoughts. I mean, it could have, could have been chaotic. Anyway, uh, get your to get your gift, you just put a pair of socks from Dead Soxy's Ole Miss NIL subscription into your cart. 
and your free pair of Juice Kiffin socks will automatically appear in your cart. There's no membership fees to become a member. All you have to do is start your subscription by adding one pair of NIL socks to your cart, choosing how often you want new pairs from the Ole Miss collection delivered. So head over to deadsoxy.com backslash rebels and sign up for the NIL subscription today to show your support. Game Changer Patches are the only two-patch system available in the market to stop hangovers before they start. Warm-up patch used before or while you drink. Overtime patch used after you've been drinking to recover while you sleep. The all-natural ingredients will keep you in the game, ready for the next play. Go to GameChangerPatch.com. Promo code REBELGROVE20 at checkout for 20% off your purchase. Also brought to you by ACS, Automation and Control Systems, LLC. It's a complete electrical control system solution provider, a Rockwell Automation Recognized System Integrator. Has a full-time dedicated emergency service and troubleshooting staff, a UL508A panel shop. They can custom tailor software packages, custom design electrical control panel solutions, and much more. It's ACS LLC, MS.com, or call 662-601-4381. And we're brought to you by Lamons Fine Jewelry. Lamons at 1126 North Lamar Boulevard in Oxford. It's been serving the Oxford area for three quarters of a century. Whatever your jewelry need may be, Lamons is the gold standard in fine jewelry. Visit them at LamonsFineJewelry.com or call them at 662-234-2777. Podcast also brought to you by Johnson Hill Creamery, johnsonhillcreamery.com. Remember, they have a uh, charcuterie 101 class coming to the Delta, the Travelers Hotel on 3rd Street in Clarksdale, March 21st, 6 to 8 o'clock for that. Snacks and refreshments included, dessert included. You can take the charcuterie tray home at the end of the night after you learn several different uh, things that are pretty cool with making that look neat and uh, feeding people on the way as well. So that's johnstillcreamery.com. Remember, you can sh- shop right there on the website. They have that up and running. It's an easy way to get it done. 662-419-9201 or question with questions or stop into the shop in the House Mustard's fantastic. That's right off Molly Bar on White Oak Lane in Oxford. You would have had to crate juice when the eagle was flying. You do if you think so. I mean, I think you have to at least consider it. I mean, that would be catastrophic. Yeah, we don't need this in a situation. What was the Longhorn and Ugga got into it a few yeah, years ago? That was close. Ugga would not have fared well. Mm, we'd but. have been on to another Ugga. <laughs> Introducing Ugga 9 or whatever the next. I mean, next time Texas. Because Bebo kind of went after it. Oh, I mean, when Georgia and Texas play in league play, they're going to figure that out. You got to keep the Bulldog away from the Longhorn. I mean. He's a Longhorn. Yeah. He's going to win most mascot battles head to head here. I mean, guys. To me, it's a natural rivalry, Texas and Georgia, because of that. I mean, that, that could have been that ignited the I mean, that could have been the kind of thing that creates war. Someone comes and kills your mascot? I mean, it's a fight. That's a good point. I mean maybe the most public mascot in the country. You got to retaliate. <laughs> well, I mean, Bebo already has been I mean, got his name from the the Syrian who was covering up thirteen to nothing. I mean, or look what happened at Alabama and Auburn. I mean, somebody just put a damn shirt on Bear Bryant, next thing you know, the, the, the trees are poisoned. I mean, if, if Bevo kills Ugga, what are you going to do? You're going to lay down and take that? I mean, suddenly you, you got to have guards around Bevo at all times. It's a lot to think about. Yeah, and Auburn would have added yet another mascot. You'd have the eagle. Juice. Juice, Aubie, the Plainsman, whatever that is. You have a lot going on. It's a bit of a schizophrenia going on there. I mean, Ole Miss has that too with a shark and a bear. And a, Ole Miss has been through some things. Been through some mascot hell. Bevo automatically becomes one of the top three mascots in the league. It's Ugga, him, and Mike. Yeah, that's it. Those three. Yeah. Mike's pretty cool. Mike's the best mascot. Come on. It's not even close. He's the best mascot. I've got it's blasphemy. <laughs> as they have continued to inbreed them as they have, I actually have started preferring Bully to Ugga. Whoa. Just from the standpoint of, like, I do wonder, like, are we ca- like are we causing issues here? You know what I mean? Well, when he only lives, like, nine months. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, come on, guys. Come on. Like, maybe, maybe we're making look going yeah because bully lives for a while he's like perfectly normal bulldog well yeah because they're not look i like bully no, i'm, I'm not sorry going peta here i'm just saying like i like bully he's a nice he's a nice dog i've got to i got to pet him a few you got years to pet ago. B- yeah bully? yeah bully's cool yeah uh, Duran says it Uga always looks sick it's because he is sick 
That's why he dies at nine months. Yeah, I mean, he do. He always looks sick. I mean, sure, the all-white bulldog is a better-looking bulldog. It is a iconic look that we know is the University of Georgia. Okay, sure. But... Just give me the Butler Bulldog. It's always on the basketball court chewing that big ass bone. He looks, I'll take him every time. He looks happy. He's good. Yeah. He's fine. Like hanging if you, out. If you have to be a mascot, that Butler Bulldog always looks fantastic. He He's, looks like he has a great life. And they don't play football, so he doesn't have to go out and like hang out in the 98 degree heat. Right. Just lays on a basketball court. Lays on the court. He's cool. Yeah, it's cool. All good. Do they play D2 football? I don't know. Or one, like some but but, one I, but I bet you he doesn't get put out in the heat wearing a sweater the, like they do with Ugga. That's a good point. I mean, Ugga sometimes it looks really hot. I mean, they have to put him on the ice to Yeah, it looks hot. Like why are you doing this to the poor guy? And they already don't breathe well. He looks miserable. No, Revley's the most overrated mascot in the country. He's a collie. It's it, F and Lassie for God's sake, stop. It, yeah, he's not even the most famous collie. No. No, I mean, if Lassie. You, like, yeah, you say, hey, famous collies. A hundred people go, Lassie. <laughs> Except for the one dude that goes, Reveille. <laughs> no, it's Lassie. It's Lassie. <laughs> I mean, Lassie's been off the air for, what, 50 years? And everybody still talks about Lassie. So it's the most popular collie. Smartest dog in the world. I mean, make sure Timmy's okay. Comes back. Yeah. Barks at the parents. They know exactly what's wrong. Yeah, it's like Lassie and Old Yeller. That's it. Why well, you had to do that? I, I know. It's hard. Really? Sorry. Hey, today we're going to break down Marley and me on the show. Like, what are we, what are we doing? <laughs> How was Old Yeller a kid's flick? Really? I don't know. Hey, guys. Life lesson here in the last five minutes. Spot's going to die. Yeah. Like, I don't know the kid's name and Old Yeller, the boy, but like, he's going to get the shotgun. It's like, hold on a minute. What, the, what are we doing? Couldn't shoot your own dog. What do you have rabies? Is that what it was? I don't Is know. That the, Something like that. Was that the plot twist? I don't remember. It's been a minute. Spoiler alert, guys. <laughs> <laughs> What's the boy's name in Old Yeller? I, I can't remember. They say blue goes to all the games. Oh, really? 1957. You do get fired up about A&M stuff. I, I, God. I can't stand it. Have you talked to Ross lately? It's been a while. Yeah. But he got mad at me eventually over some of it. I yeah. Think. I asked him for a quote one day and he was like, yeah, better not. I was like, fair. Okay. okay. <laughs> How's the cult in him? <laughs> well, it's before he left. I'm like, I, was, I saw him somewhere. And I was like, okay, so help me with the thumb thing. How exactly do we do it? Can you teach me? Like, does it, there's very precise ways that this yeah. has to. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Wikipedia. Travis is the boy's name. Travis suspects that Old Yeller may have been infected, but says nothing. Later that night, Arliss obviously tries to open the corn crib to release Old Yeller. Katie slams the door shut as Old Yeller snarls and tries to attack. Katie then tells Travis that Old Yeller is suffering and returns Arliss to the house. Katie returns with the rifle, but Travis takes it and reluctantly shoots Old Yeller and departs. So he takes the gun from another family member. I don't know who Katie is, the mother or the sister or what. And then really fires without, the weapon at the dog. Without very much discussion. Just, I'll do it. My dog, I will take care of it. What? Who thought, hey, children's flick. Great movie. It's a Could, horrible movie. Couldn't you have tranquilized the dog and taken him to a veterinary specialist and perhaps treated him? Or is when you get rabies, is that it? Is it over? Upset over his dog's death, Travis declines a new puppy sired by Old Yeller. Jim then returns with money and gifts for the family. Katie tells him about the dog, and Jim discusses it with Travis. Upon returning to the farmhouse, Travis observes the puppy stealing a piece of meat, a habit inherited from Old Yeller. Travis then accepts the puppy, Young Yeller, as his new dog. Oh. All's well that ends well. Uh, not for Old Yeller. Well, for Young Yeller. It's like I'll watch Marley and me, and I'll turn it off with like 15 minutes it's left. It's like Kiffin's already gotten a juice replacement in case something happens. Stop. No, we're not, not going there. <laughs> yeah, I get rabies are no joke, G. I'm just like, but we, this is a poorly written book. Like, I, I get it. 
but I'm just <laughs> rabies is no joke. So basically, Old Yeller paid the price for bad ownership because had he had he been yeah they somehow he got he got bit by feral hogs or something if I have the movie correct. So was he not vaccinated properly? Yeah, apparently did not have the correct. Look, Disney is pretty freaking dark. Okay, you go through a lot of movies in Disney. Yeah. You go, hold on a minute, yeah. hand raised. How was this? Got questions. A lot of family dynamic issues here. Do I have? Sound kind of yellow. Shouldn't even do that. But well, that's like all the sports writers that are so enamored with Bruce Springsteen. Like a couple of Bruce Springsteen songs are kind of creepy as hell. I'm already done with my hot takes for the day, so I'll hold the fact that he's very overrated too. I mean, hey, but little girl, is. is your daddy home? I mean, come on. I mean, I got questions right off the bat. You're really going to the door and saying, hey, little girl, is your daddy home? Come on. Feels a little problematic. And then did he go and leave you all alone? Are you saying Chris Hansen sitting over in the corner somewhere? Just, and then he just, says, I've got a bad desire. I mean, like at some point, someone goes, hey, uh, we probably don't need to put this on the label, Bruce. The Rendell Bruce Spring, Springsteen concert? Not, not my jam. There are people out there travel all over the I'm aware. place for him. I get it. You're right, though. It is a sports rider thing. I guess because they all kind of congregate thinking that they have to be. I don't know. Michael Scott, also not a fan of rabies. <laughs> How did we get here? I don't know. Oh, Longhorns, mascots, Something. Bulldogs, Old Yeller. Someone will be pissed off. It's fine. Yeah. So the Saints have the quarterback. Derek, Derek Carr, Carr headed did, to New Orleans. Did you, did you fist pump? When it, when the news broke, I was on the treadmill. I saw it. I was like, I thought of you. I'll be honest. I knew it was potentially coming, and I checked the message board. I didn't even see any topics, but I saw I had like thirty seven comments, and I went, "Oh, that's not good." They signed Derek Carr. Like in my head, I went, "Either someone baseball was hurt, or Derek Carr has just been signed, one or the other." Um, look, I can squint here and talk myself into this. I, I do think Derek Carr is an above average NFL quarterback. We've said that consistently yes. prior to. The question is, is he in the purgatory category that we always talk about? Is he good but not good enough? And what it has done for the Saints, in all honesty, is it's a very friendly deal from a cap standpoint. And now, look, the Saints are in a cap disaster. So they ha yeah, the only way they could hell. the only way they could even arguably extend their window is a deal like this. Yeah. Is the only way it made it possible. It's a it's a hundred fifty million dollar four year deal. But it's only guaranteed through two years. The Saints can get rid of him after two years if they need to and move on and do whatever they need to do. And the underrated thing last year was the Saints had a top 10 defense. Yes. So, And they had some weapons that they, because their quarterback play was so bad, they really couldn't utilize. Like, it's not Chris the, Olave was very good. It's not the worst thing in the world. It's okay. Um, it's, well, well, here's what happens. Given their options, it was the best case scenario. Here's what happened. Yeah. I mean, you just became the NFC North champ, NFC South champ. You do think that? Yeah, it's not close. And it might let you position yourself where you're the two seed or the three seed. Have a home game in New Orleans. Get to the divisional round. Anything's possible then. Make the tournament. Well, yeah. I mean, make the tournament. Make the tournament with a decent seed. I mean, crazier things. You're the three or the four and get a home game. and Yeah kind of what it feels like he's okay fine it's a hell of an upgrade and they almost made the playoffs anyway oh i think he's better than okay and fine I, he's I good he's what's he's not the, elite but he's good what's the next kind of level up from chili's because <laughs> he's kind of that like he's not out back okay look if you go into outback with the right mentality you can come away pretty pleased with the evening because we're not giving him like a Flemings or something like that, are no, we? Okay. No, but, but he's not far from that. Okay. I mean, frankly, he's outback when outback is on its A game. Yeah, 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 sure. No, he's not bad outback. No, I mean, he's outback when the service is really good and... And you got a pro going in and knows how to manipulate this thing. Yeah. I 
I don't even know what's going on over there. Takes New Orleans out of the Lamar Jackson quarterback situation that's going on. They've got their guy now. They move on. Because you've got... Lamar Jackson's a better quarterback than Derek Carr. The question with Lamar Jackson is, and this is what the Ravens have to figure out, I guess, today, is can he stay healthy enough to be your guy? Yeah, franchise tags are today. Today. Can, can Lamar Jackson, do you believe that Lamar Jackson can stay healthy and play a whole season? Derek Carr has proven that he can. Big-time quarterback teams looking for guys. Texans, Colts, Raiders, Falcons, Panthers, Jets. The Jets appear to be just waiting on Aaron Rodgers and having no idea what to do if that doesn't pan out. What are the Niners going to do? Well, they've got Brock Purdy, who's probably okay. That's where I'm I'm at. The other signee yesterday, the Seattle Seahawks and Geno Smith agreed to a three-year, $105 million contract. For You're someone, really happy for Geno Smith. For someone who has never met Geno Smith in his life. I'm, you, you've been a little, yeah, you, you've done this. I'm very pleased for Geno Smith. I, there's something about Geno Smith that I uh, It's like a weird with. combination for me, and, and I don't know why I feel like this. I have nothing necessarily against Russell Wilson, but I was really happy that the Seahawks were fine after Russell Wilson, and Russell Wilson wasn't. I had some weird fan thing where I went, no, I'd rather Pete Carroll win this one. Yeah, I enjoyed Seattle playing well last year. And Which, I, for me, says I know, and boatloads. I, and I enjoyed Denver sucking. And I have no real reason to feel either way about either one. Yeah, I mean, Trey Lance is still here, too. But, I mean, <sighs> I'm not mortgaging my future on that one. I mean, if Aaron Rodgers called the Niners and said, I want to come home, don't you think they'd do None. it? Because they're all up in their window. Oh, I mean, holy shit. They're great. They yeah. seen a quarterback. That's yeah, where that is. I mean, Lord. Where's Garoppolo going? I don't know. I mean, I guess somewhere on that list, but... If Lamar Jackson goes to the Commanders, does he change the, does he change the game for them? Because they just went Carson Wentz and were mediocre. Yeah, they're okay. Well, does he take them from okay to outback? I think the Saints with Carr are better than the Commanders with Jackson. Well, then I what, think. Then what you just said in the in a watered down NFC, the Saints are a contender. I mean, look, the Eagles are good, but the Eagles weren't like world beating good. They were good. Oh, you go into next year with Eagles, Cowboys, not really knowing what uh, the Giants have. I'm not doing that Cowboys thing anymore. I'm out. I'm the out. Vikings have everybody back. I'm out. Nope. I'm out. The Vikings, the Vikings are out. I'm out. The Lions are coming. Okay. But they're not ready yet. And in the South, it's the Saints. So what you're saying is the Saints are a contender. And I'm agreeing with you. Who else is a contender to win this to get to the Super Bowl? Not to win it, because the whoever comes out of the AFC is the favorite. Chiefs, Bills, Bengals, whatever. But in the NFC, I mean, who it's not the Rams anymore. It's not the Cardinals. I don't think anybody's ready to call Seattle. I mean, Gino, it's a great story. Cardinals, no. Falcons, no. Panthers, no. Bears, no. Cowboys, do what you will. No. Lions? Probably not yet. Packers? No. I do think the Rams are intriguing. I get it. I do think they're intriguing. I do. Vikings? Eh. No. They're going to be really good in the regular season. I mean, they're in quarterback purgatory. Saints, maybe. Yeah. Giants, Eagles. Giants, no. Eagles, sure. 49ers, yes. Yes, depending on who their quarterback is. Seahawks. No. Buccaneers. God, no. Commanders. No. That's it. That's that's the NFC. One of those teams has to go to the Super Bowl. They do. The more you think about it, unless the Saints. And play the Chiefs, the Bengals, or the Bills. Unless the Saints cap stuff results in them having to. I do feel like they need one more weapon, so we'll see what they can actually get done. We haven't gotten to the draft yet. It's hard to blame Derek. It's hard to blame the Raiders' failures on Derek Carr when their defense was so bad. I never watched Derek Carr play and went, oh, he sucks. Oh, he's, he's pretty good. Not great. But pretty good. Whew. You guys. Yeah, I think Cliff Kingsbury's still in Thailand, best I can tell. He's just hanging out. 
Looks pretty nice over there, actually. I think he's doing okay. I think Cliff's going to be all right. Yeah, I think Cliff's I think life, <laughs> life is fine. He doesn't appear to be in a hurry to get back. I mean. <laughs> There's a beach and a bar. and some. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, he's speaking with smoke shows. A lot of cash. A lot of uh, cash. Yeah. Podcast brought to you by Northeast Spark and ESPERC service people across rural communities. Two packages, the Ignite, the 100 Mbps, or the Blaze, the one gig that powers the Clark Ford Studio, your hometown team bringing you world-class broadband. That's any spark. Dot com 662-238-3159. Phone service, portal controls, network security, a wireless mesh extender, those who need that extra step, and the best internet in Lafayette County, as well as parts of Union and Pontotoc counties, if you did not previously have internet. So again, nespark.com 662-238-3159. Brought to you by Pinnacle, Pinnacle Home to the Pinnacle 401k advisory services team. They'll, get, they'll conduct a complimentary, no obligation benchmarking and analysis of your current 401k plan. It's mypinwealth.com. M-Y-P-I-N-N wealth.com. If you are planning a vacation, maybe you're thinking about summer vacation, get in touch with our buddy John Edwards at Regency Travel Incorporated in Memphis. It's 901-494-3387 or Edwards at regencytravel.net. Uh, no mailbag this week, but you can still get in touch with Whitney McNutt of Tommy Morgan Incorporated Realtors, serving you for all of your real estate needs in Oxford and Tupelo. She sells condos, land, commercial and residential family homes, 662-567-2573 or 662-842-3844. Brought to you by Service Specialist Staffing and Recruiting Agency, connecting great job opportunities to candidates since 1967. If your company is looking to hire quality, hard-to-find talent, get in touch with Service Specialist. It's always um, free for the candidate. Payment is solely contingent on if you decide to hire a candidate they send. So give Will, Sydney, or Kelsey a call at 662-832-5138 or check out their site, servicespecialistltd.com. Don't just accept what you see, but imagine something new. Step forward, chase after a better version of yourself. Every day, Corinth Dental is having people reinvent themselves one smile at a time. Dr. Bubba McQueen, Dr. Jenny Beth Hendrick are devoted to restoring and enhancing the natural beauty of your smile using conservative state-of-the-art procedures, including Invisalign. These clear aligners are the virtually invisible way to improve your smile, so call Corinth Dental today. For a no-cost digital scan of your teeth, let them show you the way to a straighter, healthier smile. 12 months, no interest. No down payment financing is available at CorinthDental.com. And we're brought to you by Southern Traditions Farm. It's a 68-acre, 32-stall, upscale equestrian training and boarding facility in Canton, Mississippi. Two sand rings, a grass ring, miles of wooded trails, a lot to be offered in Southern Traditions, including horseback riding offerings. From uh, beginner lessons with Susan Walt to buying your first horse and competing at nationally recognized competitions. Get in touch with him on Facebook or Instagram at Southern Traditions Farm. Dame Brugler with a uh, new mock draft this morning. He has the Saints taking Brian Breesey, the uh, defensive tackle out of Clemson, and their uh, oh. their pick late. Shoring up defense says that they need help on the defensive line, and the draft might be the best chance to do that, considering all the other situations going on around their cap and their team and whatnot. Post combine mock draft, he has the Colts draft uh, trading up from Chicago to take CJ Stroud, number one overall. Oh, from Ohio State. Okay. Projected trade would be numbers four and 35 and a 2024 first to Chicago for number one. Oh, that'd be a good haul for the Bears. So if you're Bears, you would get a four, a 35, and next year's one from the Colts. Oh, that's a good haul. Move down three spots, get a second round pick. And, and a first next and, year. And the Colts, if they play a rookie quarterback, could lose a bunch. Mm -hmm. Ooh, if you're the Bears, you jump at that. Bryce Young, number two to the Houston Texans. Mr. McGrady does not like Mr. Young right now. <sighs> He's just small. <clears throat> I love Bryce Young. It's one of the problems where he goes, hey, no, he's Kyler Murray. And they go, okay, well, Kyler Murray hadn't won a Super Bowl. I mean, okay. Bryce Young's 5'10", about 200 pounds. He's got small hands. Mm, I, mean, I love Bryce Young. I love everything about him. Every time I watched him play, I'm like, oh, he's, he's a magician on a college field. But mm -hmm. The pro field's not a college field. Will Anderson, number three, to the Arizona Cardinals. Okay. Oh, sure. Sure. Whatever you need. Carolina Panthers, Anthony Richardson, quarterback, University of Florida, number four. They have the Bears then trading the fourth pick to trade down again, by the way. Oh, because I was about to ask. Okay. Projected trade, 
Uh, Chicago giving up their number four for the number nine pick, the number 61 pick, and the Panthers' first round next year. Damn. So in this world, the Bears really believe in next year's draft. The Bears in this world would have two extra first round, two extra first round picks next year and two extra second round picks next year. So they would have oh. six picks in the top 61 picks. Well, if you're not just wildly enamored with one of those guys in the top five, you do trade that. Stockpile. On. Yes, get picks. And right. you go, hey, can we get somebody at nine? And you can go from there. So Richardson to Carolina yep. at four. Yep. Whew, boy. He is. The measurables are great, boy. Woo. I mean, they're not just great. They're elite. They are. Popping up, off all the pages. Upper crust. The best of the best. He's the most fascinating guy in the draft because it's going to be a team that goes, did you look at the tape? He sucks. And they're going to pass over him and then go, oh, God, don't let him be a Hall of Famer. Oh. Don't let him figure it out because holy hell. The size, the speed, the athletic ability, the arm. It's elite. All of it. I mean, if he were a baseball player. 80. He's getting 80. 80s. Yeah. He's five tools. That's as high as it goes for people. Yeah, people, it's a 2080 scale. Yeah. 20 sucks. 80's incredible. He literally, if he were a baseball player, would be getting 80s on a bunch of things. He would be upper 70s, 80s, and then some guy would be going, yeah, but have y'all seen him hit? Yes, Anthony Richardson is the ultimate uh, underwear Olympic champion. Oh, Done. dude. Hey, where's Levis in this? Because Levis... Levis is not Anthony Richardson in the underwear Olympics, but he's, he's, but he's the silver medalist. Jalen Carter to five, Seahawks. Okay. Uh, corner from Oregon, six to the uh, Lions, and then Levis, seven to the Raiders. Oh. The Raiders have been very open about their desire to draft a run, young quarterback at seven. He's basically the one that's left at this point. So they signed Garoppolo, draft Levis, and feel like they've got quarterback figured out. Will Levis is a pretty charismatic guy. You put him in Vegas and let him have success. They have the Bears taking uh, Lucas Van Ness, the defensive lineman from Iowa, at nine mm -hmm. overall okay. with their pick. It says for the Bears, it would be an outstanding scenario by trading down twice. They would own five picks in the next 64, not counting their own, plus two additional first-rounders. The storylines in this pairing will be fun, blah, blah, blah. General manager Ryan Poles believes in building for the long term, so adding an ascending talent like Van Ness and draft capital being multiple trades would fit the profile. Agreed. That would actually be smart. You're not winning this year. And the Bears also have a ton of cap room. Like, they're the opposite of the Saints. Broderick Jones, Jets. Georgia offensive tackle at 13. Bijan Robinson, 14. Texas running back to the Eagles. Brian Branch, nickelback at Alabama, 15. The Packers. That dude's a good player. For other SEC players. Darnell Washington tied in Georgia 24 to the Jags. They put a franchise tag on Evan Ingram, by the way, um, for this year. <clears throat> Drew Sanders, linebacker, Arkansas to the Bills at 27. Yeah, I can see that. He was he very quietly had a really good year. Their defense was so bad that no one noticed it, but he he made some plays. And then the Eagles' other pick, they have them taking Darnell Wright, the Tennessee kind of swing offensive lineman, could play tackle or guard. Okay. At the uh, at the next level, so there's your uh, there's your draft. We have plenty more time to go over mock drafts between now and the uh, the draft. April still is that what it is? End of April, yeah. Is it end of April? I would just like to thank Chris Beard for his um, distraction over the next over the last few weeks. It's been. <laughs> He has carried things here. Uh, <laughs> we at MPW Digital are thankful. For his candidacy. Yes. At this point. It's fantastic. Oh, Lord. I, I'm not going to talk about this because, frankly, I don't know that it matters. But The Athletic did a big story on coaches' contracts and all the crazy stuff in them. And I guess I've covered the SEC long enough that I read every bit of it went, yeah. Like, there was nothing in it. It was like, oh, they have car allowances and country club memberships. And it's like, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, it was completely desensitized. They talked to like 19 coaches and got their full contracts. And I went, that's in every one of those things is in Lane Kiffin's contract. The flight time, the whole deal. Yeah. I'm, 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 there's nothing about this that is surprising or entertaining to me. 
it just but, shows you we live in such a different world than most of contracts around the country. We're like, oh no. Yeah, most people look at it and go, I can't believe that's incredible. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, okay. Because they're like, yeah, Dion gets twelve hundred dollars a month in car allowances. It's like, that's it. Yeah, my yeah. first thought is that's all. <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> God, who's his agent? Yeah, he got he got he got chipped there a little bit, didn't he? Um, I'm a little confused. So, yeah, I don't know. I just was reading through this morning looking for something. I said, oh, well, this could be interesting because there's something here. And no, there was nothing here at all. At all. Texas Tech, by the way, made Corey Williams their interim coach with the whole Mark Adams thing. So I don't know what's going on there. But with the obvious beard connections, just trying to keep you guys abreast of anything uh, related to that Texas Tech search as it moves forward. Again, I've. I went through their message board and there was just very little there about Chris Beard at all. It did not feel like that was where this thing was headed. No, I told you, I talked to someone in Austin who said I, it, it was connected with that deal too and said, I just don't see it. It said that the bridges weren't necessarily burned, but they were, they were beyond repair. Games today, just quickly trying to see if anything sticks out. Um, who won the, did, did Gonzaga and St. Mary's both win? Gonzaga, I guess they did because they play. Oh, no, hold on. That was yesterday. That was March 6th. So, Tuesday, March 7th, games. St. Mary's plays Gonzaga tonight at 8 o'clock. Sign me up. What round is that? Championship. Oh, that is the championship. Okay. I was yeah. about to say, surely to God, that's not earlier. Two really good teams. Both in the tournament anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they get to play loose. They're like probably a three seed and like a six. Maybe so. Five or six. Yeah. Something this like year, St. Mary's will be a higher seed. St. Mary's is uh, ranked 16th right now nationally. Is where they're at. Seeing if any other ranked teams are in action tonight. I mean, these plays, Corpus Christi, if you're on the Will Wade watch. St. Peter's, former Darling, they play Fairfield tonight. No, that's kind of boring, honestly. Not much else sticking out to me. Um... That's it. Again, Southern Miss, Ole Miss tonight from uh, from Swayze Field. Have coverage of their ad at rebelgrove.com. As again, uh, Ole Miss throwing JT Quinn as they started doing every single Tuesday. I would assume they're going to be careful with pitch count. They'll use him this weekend at some point as well. So I know it's Southern Miss. Mike's not going to go all out tonight to beat the Golden Eagles. He's going to manage the pitching staff. It's the kind of, I mean, these are the kind of games that get coaches fired. The Tuesday against the ranked team that literally will do nothing for or against you at some point. I mean, if you're not if you're not winning this game, probably not beating any SEC teams. That's very true. It's the only ranked contest of the night in the uh, in the non-con. Alabama, by the way, still undefeated. They're twelve and zero. Yeah, they play Samford tonight. I like the Tide's chances in Birmingham. They're headed over. Oh, playing at play Samford on the road. Tonight. They got a chance to run this Alabama thing. baseball. Will go anywhere. I'll give you a series to kick off league play. The most. Ole Miss plays Vanderbilt, which is interesting in a number of ways. Yes. Alabama at Florida. Oh. Off the top. Hey. Is next weekend when everything starts? Mm -hmm. Who yeah. what are the matchups next weekend? March sixteenth is the date for the opening weekend of league play. Okay. All right, hold on, I'll tell you. I had it up a second ago. March sixteenth. Let's go to the Friday to make sure everybody plays. SEC. Your opening weekend of conference play, Mississippi State at Kentucky. Ugh, God. Yeah. The loser of that one, go ahead and move on with your day. You yeah. can move ahead. That's a wolf. South Carolina at Georgia. Kind of a Both wolf. Both teams need it. They're, yeah. they're right there together. That's one that actually kind of interests me a little bit. Um, Alabama at Florida. Yeah. It's really in on that one. Yeah. Tennessee at Missouri. God bless the Tigers in the uh, the opening weekend of play there. Yeah. You're Missouri, you're trying to get one. Yeah, just get, get one. LSU in College Station to play the Aggies. Oh. Ole Miss at Vanderbilt. Yeah, for sure. And Auburn at Arkansas. That's a good one. Yeah. So that's top of league play. The uh, three most interesting interesting ones, obviously, Alabama, Florida, Ole Miss, Vanderbilt, and then LSU, A&M. Yeah, and, I think uh, so. And that one. I think Slash so, Slash Nagel's team still scuffling a little bit. Yeah, and LSU's not scuffling. They're, they're not. They're good. They're very good. Incarnate Word is A&M's opponent tonight in College Station. So. Okay. All right. 
podcast tomorrow? No, I don't know. We'll get some podcasts to you. I don't know. The schedule's kind of funny. so We we'll won't be know. streaming here for a while. There will be more content, but this will no longer look like 8 o'clock for a good bit here. So we'll give you the exact schedule, what's going on. I'll update you while Neil is headed to Nashville for the SEC basketball tournament. Ole Miss, South Carolina tomorrow night at 6 o'clock in that one. So take care.